Uh, not long back now from the Head in the Game Park after Draw the United's 1 0 win over Waterford. Newly promoted Draw the side. Um, were brilliant. You know, it was good, really, really good to see. Um, you know, coming up, you you want to start off as well as possible. And Draw the started off with a big three points. So, uh, brilliant to see. Um, really, really good stuff. Uh, first a game heading in, heading in, you know, first game of the Premier Division season. Uh, of course, you want to start as well as possible. Um, I thought Draw the were. The better side in in in, in the game, and um, the first half I thought Rada sort of dominated, but Waterford still had had their nice spells of play where, um, where they played well, but um, they did they looked really really dangerous from set pieces. Waterford did, um, but in the end I think Rada were probably deserved winners. I think created a, a good amount of chances. Um, Waterford uh, definitely won't be an easy an easy game for anyone this season. Um, look a really really good side, uh, brilliant win for Drada who uh, start the season off with a big three points. Um, so next week they look ahead and they're facing Saint, we're facing Saint Patrick's Athletic away, um, and of course another t a tough game. Um, but uh, brilliant to, to start the season off in the right way, picking up a, a big three points and uh, looking ahead. You just have to, to take each game as it comes. So really really good stuff. Uh, good win for Drada. Yeah. So there's um. It's disappointing uh, to talk about the game, to be honest, uh, for a number of reasons. Now, obviously, the, the obvious reason is to concede so late on to an own goal. That was very unfortunate. Um, especially when I felt that the performance as a whole wasn't bad enough to merit that. Um, I thought that uh, they definitely showed marked improvement on uh, pre-season. Uh, I thought Jamie Maskell and Kyle Ferguson in particular were very good on the night. Um, we did struggle to take our chances. But um, overall, I thought we showed a lot of cohesion and it's disappointing that uh, that could potentially, you know, this is a test of character. It's very tough to lose the first game of the season and go on to do well. Um, but this is a test of character now. They have a tough game coming up against Sligo and that's going to be, um, uh, if they can even get a draw out of that, like that would be like a, a superhuman effort, I think, um, because that's what we're up against. Uh, unfortunately, the performance on the field was overshadowed by some events off the field that concern um, Keen Kavanagh and him not being registered despite being signed for the club for a month. Now, there's obviously been things wrong with Waterford FC for a long time, and that concerns a number of uh, issues. And it's been a media circus, I think, for a while. Uh, other League of Ireland fans must be looking at us thinking, you know, what the hell is going on at this club? Well, the newest fiasco is possibly the worst yet, that Keen Kavanagh, the striker that we have for a month, was not registered to play this game, and hence he couldn't, he, that's why he wasn't on the team sheet. The, 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 um, ugh, I'm, I mean, I'm just at a loss for words at that. Hopefully he's registered next week and uh, you never know, maybe we might see a new look Waterford and we'll go out and we'll beat Sligo 4-0. Uh, yeah, but uh, in the real world, I suppose, we'll be very lucky to get a draw. But still, I'll back the Blues. So St. Patrick's Athletic won, Shamrock Rovers won. Uh, happy enough with the point as a Pats fan going up to the home of the champions. But considering how the game went and Pats getting, going ahead so late on, I... I would say it's a bigger point for Albers than it is for Pats, funnily enough. But, you know, I thought Chris Forrest was excellent. Look, Desmond, well, excellent. He got man the match. I probably, you could have argued for Forrest. Uh, I think Paddy Barrett was playing full game. I know we had a little blip there with the ball hit a stand of foot. But, you know, if Paddy Barrett was on that pitch, I, I couldn't see us conceding that goal now. I know Sam, he probably got, he was only, he was thrown straight in with Paddy going down the cramp. But, you know, excellent stuff. I thought, uh, I just, I was really impressed. And, you know, you could see the makings of a great front three there with Coughlin linking in the ball with, you know, Matty Smith and Billy King only for the first half. I'm disappointed to see Billy going off. I probably would have liked Billy for the second half of the game instead of the first half. But look, these things happen. I thought, uh, I thought Benson ran himself into the ground and looked for us. I was head and shoulders above everyone. And, it's great to see him getting there again and I'd like to see him now getting into more advanced areas of the pitch and really haunting people uh, further up the pitch, which I do tend, think we will see against, against the so-called lesser size. Not that the gap is different, uh, big difference, but, you know, I'd say we'd play a lot further forward and, 
you know, we can hold teams when we're on the counter, we can hold teams getting around the back, which we've seen, uh, Mighty Smith and stuff, but, uh, like, that's how Benson got the goal, you know, great link up play, Benson's trail, and look, we got a bit of luck, which I'll take that all day long, but, you know, overall, really good start, I don't think Sean McGraw was broke us down an awful lot, Jaros made a couple of great saves, but yeah, really happy with it, and uh, it's a great starting point. Keith's asked me as a Rovers fan to do an analysis of the Southside derby between Shamrock Rovers and St. Patrick's Athletic, which finished one all last night. I watched the game back this morning and my thoughts are that the ref was appalling for both sides. I thought that he was making the game quite stop start like the ref the week beforehand in the President's Cup. I thought that even though we were missing the likes of Jack and McAniff and we will miss them throughout the season, I thought that players like Chris McCann and players like Danny Mandrew played okay, but if I was to give a standout player for Rovers on the night, it probably would be Chris McCann, because ever since he's come in, he's done great. I think there was a few players on both sides that really took the game and destroyed the likes of Chris Forrester, Lee Desmond, and the goalkeeper that Pat got off Liverpool on loan. Played reasonably well, I thought Chris McCann, like I've said, um, I thought Graham Bork and Liam Scales had decent games last night. I believe that over the past few games, it will take a few games for us to gel as a side because we're accommodating a lot of new players into this squad. I thought Sean Gannon was great last night. I thought he showed why we want to get him back. I know a lot of fans were doubting him. Not Rovers fans, but League of Ireland fans in general were doubting him when he came back to Rovers saying he was past it. But going off the past few games and off his pre-season, I don't think he's passed out. I think he's well in form. Um, Green has equalised. Equalised that coming off the bench, I thought, really impacted the game. But also showed that it took Rovers to concede the goal for them to turn to the side that they were last year and switch from a side that sat back for a lot of last night when Pats got the ball to a side who are pressing Pats and went for every ball. In my opinion, Pat's done what they done last year and parked the bus. I thought that they had a lot of men behind the ball whenever Rovers went through phases of attacks. But Rovers winning the game, I thought we would have won easily before the game, but it wasn't meant to be. Um, I think Green's goal may warrant them a start in next week's game against Derry if that goes ahead because there is talk about it being called off. But all in all, I think Benson, who always gets a goal against Rovers, his goal on the counter was okay, but I think we were caught out there. And then as soon as Green has scored, I thought we may push on for a winner, which we tried to do, but it just wasn't meant to be. I thought it was, like I said, start a very stop startish game, but it will take a few games for most of the teams in the league to gel with the new players coming in. Hi all, uh, Jared here from uh, Sligo Rovers. Uh, just after watching the stream of Rovers versus Dundalk, um, absolutely brilliant game of football. Um, Sligo Rovers will be the more disappointed uh, not to have taken the three points, and Dundalk I think will happy be happy out to get back over to Loud with, with a point. Um, game started off in fairness to Dundalk, were the stronger side for the first fifteen minutes and capitalised on a mistake from. Ed McGinty, where he fed the ball out to Greg Bulger, probably gave him too much to do, and Dundalk capitalised with McElhaney uh, applying a great finish for the first goal uh, of the game. After that, Rovers really came into the, into the, into the game. They really settled, uh, started to play some nice play, and after 23 minutes, um, Romeo Park scored from a, from a header um, inside the box. Um, after that, Rovers had good chances through Johnny Kenny um, and Jordan Gibson, where Gibson uh, was unlucky to see his shot come back off the post. Um, a minute before half time, uh, McGinty rashly came out of the box, gave the ball away, and Dundalk were unlucky not to get um, to go two one up um, at the break. In the second half, Dundalk probably were the stronger team for the first few minutes, uh, but again Rovers took a few minutes to settle. But once they did, they were. Much the better side, um, and dominated the the play. Um, Dundalk really only had one chance in the second half, but in fairness, to them they were lucky. Where again they seen where they seen the ball come back off the post. Um, as the game went into the last twenty minutes, Rovers had great chances through uh, 
um, Greg Bulger and Johnny Kenny where the Dundalk, Dundalk keeper pulled out brilliant saves. Um, the controversial uh, part of the game was to come then uh, with about two minutes to go when Mark Byrne turned, uh, a, shot, uh, turned a, sh uh, a pass from David Cawley into the net with the linesman having ruled offside, unfortunately for Rovers. Hard to see how it was offside, but um, very, very disappointed that we, we that it was ruled out and we didn't take the three points. But a brilliant performance from Sligo Rovers. Um, I think they'll get stronger and stronger as the season moves on. And, you know, watch the space. Um, we'll be up there or thereabouts. Thanks. Bye-bye. Sligo Rovers and Dundalk played at an entertaining draw in the showgrounds with either side could have claimed victory in what was a contest that could have swung either way. In what was a cagey start, the game sprung into life after 16 minutes when Patrick McElhenney opened his goal-scoring account for this season. A mix-up in the area in a phase of play saw the ball stolen by Greg Sloggett. He squared it to Patrick McElhenney and he still had Ed McGinty to beat. However, he did excellently to curl it past the goalkeeper to open his goal scoring and on Dawk's account for the 2021 season. Sligo didn't have long to wait to respond, however, with a goal from Romero Parks. An excellent ball was sent into the area with from a free kick and Romero Parks did brilliantly to head a pass to Beebe at the near post. The perfect response from the home side. Sligo did have chances to put themselves ahead in the first half, however, when Jordan Gibson was set free from a brilliant phase of play, which was set up by Romero Parks. Jordan did have the ball passed to Bibi, however, unfortunately, the butt of the post denied him. And a, a big chance for Dundalk fell on the stroke of half time when Junior stole the ball off Ed McGinty on the edge of the area. He did brilliantly to cross it to, pa uh, to Patrick Hoobin, whose shot flashed just wide. The second half was a case of close calls with Cameron Donegan and Walter Figuera going close in the early exchanges of the game. However, Huben went close with a fantastic ball that was sent in by Daniel Cleary. He added pace and power to the ball and with Ed McGinty clutching at thin air. However, the post once again denied the big man. Mark Byrne sent in an excellent ball in and Johnny Kenny was at the back post with the goal gaping. He didn't make the right connection and the ball flashed wide. And with that, Mark Byrne also did have the ball in the back of the net. However, the linesman had the flag up and he was denied a late, late winner for the home side. Dundalk and Sligo will rue the missed chances that they had in this game, but a draw was a fair result. An entertaining encounter for an opening weekend of the season. Dundalk sit on one point and Sligo do as well. We're back, baby. Come on, town. Full time in Bishopsgate, Longford Town 2, Derry City nil. And it was really all about the town tonight. Their first time back in the top flight in a number of years. A great early goal by Dylan Grimes uh, set the tone for the game. Really, Longford were very tenacious in midfield. Didn't give Derry any breathing space at all. I thought uh, coming in at half time was 1 0 Longford. I thought it was Longford if they got the next goal that they would see out the game. You're obviously going to give up a chance or two at this level, but Derry were. Reduced to slim pickings, really. You know, uh, Lee Stacey, I think he had one save to make. They marshaled that defence really, really well. And then they go and get the second goal. Up pops Joe Gorman. Scored a couple of headers in the playoffs last year. And he's brought that into the Premier Division with him. And in truth, it could have been 3-0. Longford had a couple of other chances. Probably what could have been goal of the season. A. Dervin with a free kick from about 30, 40 yards out dips and rattles the crossbar but look a fantastic three points for Longford Town to start the season um, pity the Derry City performance wasn't as good as what we would have thought but uh, look it's a long way to go and we'll enjoy being top of the league this week Alright folks um, disappointing performance tonight against Longford um, it was a huge opportunity for us to um, get three points on the board early doors and Build a bit of momentum ahead of the season, but unfortunately, we didn't put in the performance that we thought that we thought the team was capable of. Um, but look, I'm sure Dick and the lads know that, and they'll, they'll be working this week and putting it right. Doesn't get any easier than playing Shamrock Rovers at the Brandeville next Saturday. But looking through Derry fashion, it's possible that <laughs> in true Derry fashion, it's likely that we would lose to the newly promoted team and go and beat the champions. But anybody thought that tonight's game was going to be easy, um, we're, um, I think we're a wee bit delusional. Um, Longford, our team, just come up and bowed 
by promotion so they were always and they've been tipped by many to be relegated so they've been looking to put a, a marker down early doors to show that they're that they're here for the they compete and not just make up the numbers and boy did they do it um but look one game doesn't define your season so we can't get too downhearted on on the performance and defeat and just hope now that the next few games um i think two of them's at home this year McGrovers and waterford before a trip to uh, Drahara. Um so hopefully now over the next three or four games the players will players will, will, will improve and we see a wee bit more of a, the new signings and we didn't see a lot of parkhouse because I don't think the service was a, was there from tonight the only service really was from set pieces which I thought were pretty decent um, especially a corner from Will Patson but we, did, we didn't make the most of them um, but all I can say is congratulations to Longford on not just the performance but the result as well they were absolutely magnificent and they deserved the three points I wish them my best for the rest of the season obviously not against Derry but look I'm not going to get downhearted after one game so um, hopefully now like the next few games we'll, we'll see an improvement and hopefully see us moving up the table but look not a good start but we move on and hopefully get a few points on the, on board early doors it's full time here in Fenn Park and uh, one of the surprise results of the weekend is Finn Harps coming away with a 1-0 victory. Adam Foley with the goal in the first half, uh, the only goal of the game. Big shouts for a penalty in the second half for Bohemians but it was waved away by referee Paul McLaughlin. Overall, Bowes had better of the play for most of the game but Harps dug in there and will show that they're not pushovers for this league at all this year. Final score of Finn Park is 1-0 Finn Harps. Hi everyone, Dad's here from Bohemian FC fan group. Uh, match reaction from tonight, won the loss against Harps, um, I'm very disappointed in the result. I just thought we'd get the win. Um, it's one of these teams you know, that's going to be fighting every team for every point they're going to get this season. Uh, they're probably one of the poorer teams on paper, but they're showing tonight that they can grind results out. And We all know teams that are up by Ollie Horgan will always put their heart in and you know they'll try and get a result and grind out a result. And, you know, ever since they got that goal, you know, you were just knew you were going to struggle that bit more because they were happy then to just take the pressure, soak it up, and put us out of the game. And um, we played an awful lot of long balls. Both teams did. There wasn't too many passes strung between us. We had a few bits of good spells. We had a few shots, and we did get forward. Could have had a penalty. Um, there was a big shout for a penalty for us, I think, as well. Um, that I'd like to look at a replay of that. Um. Yeah, um, I think we were all a bit bemused by uh, Keith's lineup tonight. Um, he left Harry out. Ward was on the bench. You know, Alua was on the bench. You know, there was just we was crying out for a great, great player to come on. It was crying out for Bass and Harry to come on and you know change something up. Someone can string a pass together, put one through. That didn't really happen. Um, we struggled in the game. The team shape was just we're not we're not used to seeing that kind of a team lineup and. You know, I think we had three to back and we were swapping and changing and Alua came on and he went up front. It took George Kelly a while to get into the game. We did have a few chances, we didn't take them and Harps took them and got the points. Longford won tonight, they won 2-0. We played our next, it's going to be a very hard game. They'll be on confidence and all the pressure is going to be on us. Um, I think it was a learning curve for us tonight. Um, and Keith and everyone there, there's a lot of new players. They all need to bet in, they need to gel. We need to get going, we get points on the board if we want to be finishing up in the lat like where we have been in recent times. So look, it's a long season, there's plenty more games to go, plenty more points to play for. It's one game, we'll get out of the way and we'll get back going again and hopefully we can get all three points next week.